you know, for off season. This up here um, is um, a yoga loft, a loft for kids to crawl up onto. There'll be a little ship's ladder leading up to it here. This is actually Erica's yoga and meditation room up there. <laughs> Just don't tell Scott. Yeah. <laughs> you were dressed, didn't you? Yeah. And then, and then that door up there obviously is is the access into storage attic, mechanical attic, and so on. Um, Originally, this was designed with two bedrooms, and then we went down to just one bedroom. And then we're back up to a, I'm sorry, two bathrooms. And then we went down to one bathroom, and now we're back up to a full bathroom and kind of a powder room that also doubles as a laundry room. So that'll all be within cabinets and so on. Um, all of, and, and I should say this too, that all the, um, all the design of this is is in accordance with LEED standards. You know, so it's super energy efficient, super water efficient, very low flow, everything. All the lighting is going to be LED lighting. Um, mechanical closet right here. So this is one bedroom. This will be for Erica's son. And then the closet wall will be right in here. So, you know, nice views out here, very open. This is going to be the access to the backyard, but also if they should want to put in an addition, then it'll go back out here. This will be the hallway to the addition. Mm -hmm. How many square feet version? 1,030. 1,030. Mm -hmm. And so really this is kind of an oversized bathroom because it's going to be used by you know, all members of the house. So you've got some privacy back here. This is um, shower and toilet room right here. So if someone is getting ready in the morning, brushing their teeth, somebody else could be you know, doing their other morning ablutions. Did you do any intro or anything? We didn't, don't have to. Yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, the insulation on this house is across the board double what's required by state, by state standards. And, and with that little bit extra cost, we're, we have brought the house down from over 60,000 BTU down to about 10,000 BTU. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And so hopefully it will be very rare that they'll even have to have the furnace running. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but this is the message I want to you know, telling people that just for a little bit extra, the return would be phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But the, um, the materials used on the exterior, part of it was cost, part of it was environmentally um, uh, related choices. You know, all the metal siding, it's less expensive to install, it's less expensive to purchase, never has to be, never has to has, have anything done to it, you know, because it's baked on finish. So is it just AZAC in the front? It's, it's actually not AZAC, it's LP Smart Side, which is a um, uh, recycled product. Oh. Yeah. So Scott and Erica painted all that before it was installed. <laughs> and so this has, um, this has actually an untreated lifespan of, of over 30 years and, and um, this has been used, this product itself, well, I'm sorry, the coating has a, has a, a warranty of 30 years, but uh, the product itself has been in use since the 1950s. And I have been on some military resident, uh, um, military installations up in North Dakota that had this product on it that were built in the n late 1940s, early 1950s, and it's still holding up nicely. Yes. Yeah. Now these windows, these south windows and also the west window, we have awnings over them that actually Scott is making and it's, they're going to match the, um, the corrugated metal. So in the, in the summertime then, the heat, and this is kind of interesting, the heat in this, the, the sun in the summertime will only come in about three and a half feet into the building. So you're not going to be gaining all that amount of heat. But in the winter, you can see how far back it goes and we're, you know, we're past the winter solstice. 
So at the winter solstice, it actually comes back into about where Scott's standing. Yeah. So that is heating up all the slab. It comes into up here. Oh, does it? Oh, it? Yeah. oh my gosh. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that, you know, in the winter, that's going to be heating up the slab. We're going to use thermal masses on the <laughs> dining room table. We're going to use thermal masses for the coffee table, and the floor is going to be darker in color nice. to absorb that thermal energy. So the coffee table and this table, the both these tables are going to be concrete? Well, I don't know if they're going to be concrete or they're going to be something else dense, but something dense that holds the thermal energy during the day when we sit it during the night. Yeah. Cool. Hopefully but, complete by May or when's the... By May, by May? yeah. Oh, okay. but, um, That's a projected <laughs> But part of the reason that, that I'm passionate about this is not just the environmental. It has to do with Back in 1988, 89, I was working for a construction company. I was designing their, doing little tweaks on their seven or eight basic plans is what I amounted to. It was before I, I went back to school to become an architect. And I showed up at one of the houses one day and it was this big home. It was, well, at that time it was like 2,800 square feet, which was a huge home in 1988. And, and both the husband and wife worked for State Farm and they both had good incomes. But I showed up and the, the wife was there and she had obviously been crying. I mean, really crying. Her eyes were red, her lips were puffy. And I said, oh my God, what is wrong? I thought, you know, did you lose your dog or something? And she says, I've got this big, beautiful home and I don't even have enough money left over to buy furniture for it. She had sheets on the window because she couldn't even afford window coverings. And, and people are, I think, misled into this belief that they have to have all of this. And then they have no money. You know, it's, 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 it's almost like they're, um, they're prisoners to the cost of their home. And I had neighbors across the street about 15 years after that that I invited their son to go out to breakfast with, with us. And they said, well, we can't, we can't pay for that. And I said, well, that's, that's okay. We're inviting him. We're going to pay for his breakfast. And, they, and, and, and he said, you can do that. Their house costs were so much, and their furniture costs were so much that they couldn't afford to even go out to dinner anymore. And, and I don't want to see the American public, hi. I don't want to see the American public have to go through that. And so I've done, I did this survey just quickly this morning. And this kind of shows, you know, the break point up until the mid 1990s. And you, you can have this too when you're done. Um, up until the mid 1990s, the most banks would loan a person was three times their income. And and right about that time, and I've got to look into this further. I don't know if it was banking deregulations at that time, but as you can see right now. The average American home is $381,000. The average American income is $55,775. Instead of being three times, the house being three times the cost of the income, we are at over six, almost seven times the cost of, of income. And that's simply unsustainable. People cannot do that. And that's why we're running into a housing shortage because all we see are the bigger houses with bigger heating and cooling costs and people can't afford them. So that's kind of, this, that is my primary motivation. I want people to have well-designed homes that are energy efficient, that they can afford and they can have a life outside of just taking care of their homes. How many square feet, sir? 1,030. And are you building one next door? I don't know yet. If, get, if, somebody, if, if, if somebody wants to, yeah. <laughs> Do we know what the price would be? Um, Where, well, I know that this house, if. If we had done it turnkey, mm -hmm. it was it was going to be one hundred and fifty-two thousand dollars to to build this home. Okay. Plus the plus the price of of the lot. The lot. Mm -hmm. And so the goal was to have these houses designed for construction and lot for less than one hundred and eighty-six thousand dollars, which is what um, a household income of fifty thousand dollars could afford with a mortgage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Questions? They're, they brought oh. up.